the ungodly people, to deliver me from the deceitful and wicked man. For thou art God of my strength. Why hast thou from me from me? And why do I so that any one enemy oppresses me? O oh, send out the light and thy truth, that they may lead me and bring me to thy holy hill and to thy dwelling. And that I may go unto the altar of God, even unto the God of my joy and gladness. And upon the heart will I give thanks unto thee, O God, my God. Why art thou so heavy, O my soul, and art thou so disquieted within me? O oh, that my trust is God, for I will yet give thanks. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, for all the God and Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. Even unto the God of my joy and gladness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. I confess, Almighty God, to Blessed Mary, ever virgin, to Blessed Michael, the Archangel, to Blessed John Baptist, to the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, to all the saints and thee, my brethren, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore I beg, blessed Mary, ever virgin, blessed Michael the Archangel, blessed John Baptist, the holy apostles, Peter and Paul, all the angels and saints, and thee, my brethren, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon thee, forgive thy sins, and bring thee to everlasting life. Amen. I confess, Almighty God, the blessed Mary, the virgin, the blessed Michael, the archangel, the blessed John the Baptist, to the holy apostle, Peter and Paul, and all the saints, and to thee, Father, that I have sinned exceedingly in God, for and thee, have I no fault, have I no fault, have I no most grievous fault. Wherefore I beg, blessed Mary, the virgin, blessed Michael, the archangel, blessed John the Baptist, the holy apostles, Peter and Paul, to all the angels and saints, and to thee, Father, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon thee, forgive thee thy sins, and bring thee to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty and merciful Lord, grant unto us pardon, and absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. Will thou not turn again and quicken us, O God? That thy people may rejoice in thee. Show us thy mercy, O Lord. And grant us thy salvation. Lord, through my prayer. And let thy cry come unto thee. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
grace of God has appeared for the salvation of all men, training us to renounce the religion and worldly passions, and to live sober, upright, and godly lives in this world, awaiting our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all iniquity and to purify for himself the people of his own who are jealous zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to In his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Dear Lord, keep the doors of my lips so that I not sin against thee in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
When Isaiah wrote of the coming of the Wonderful Counselor, he was spurring Israel's memory to remember their Messiah was indeed coming. This was written 800 years before the actual coming of Christ. This period was filled with all sorts of trouble for Israel and other surrounding nations as the Assyrians marched through that area, taking over various countries, sending people into slavery, killing children, taking wives from their husbands and families destroyed. But what Isaiah's prophecy was trying to tell the people is that the people of God had a hope, that hope that they desperately needed, that one day a child would be, be born according to the scriptures in Bethlehem, and he would bear this title, this title of Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The term wonderful in this passage literally means incomprehensible. The Messiah will cause us to be full of wonder. And for us, we do not use that title or that word wonderful that, that in that meaning. In our normal conversation, we think of wonderful as pleasant, lovely, or something likable. We might describe a cell phone as wonderful. Here, that's not what God means. That's not what God was saying through Isaiah. He was saying that Jesus is wonderful in such a way that it's boggling to the mind. It's the same word that was used earlier by Samson's father whenever he asked God, who had come to visit him, what his name was. And the angel of the Lord looked at him and said, why do you ask me my name, seeing it is wonderful? In other words, why do you ask my name? Because it is beyond your understanding. Jesus demonstrated his wonderful, wonderfulness in a variety of ways while he was here on earth for us. It began with his birth, what we're celebrating today, in the womb of a virgin. He showed he was wonderful by his ability to be able to heal. He healed people with skin diseases, things they had been born with, the blind, the deaf. He even brought people back from the dead. His teachings burned inside of people's hearts. They were on fire and they didn't know why. He led a perfect life and then he resurrected from the dead. That is wonderful. That is beyond our understanding. That is beyond anything that you will ever see in your lifetime. The second part of that title, Counselor. In ancient Israel, a counselor was portrayed as a wise king. Jesus is that wise counselor. Because in Christ, all wisdom, all knowledge is hidden. The treasure of that is hidden in him because he is the creator of all that. By his word, this earth exists. By his word, your life exists. And all wisdom, all knowledge, anything that you have ever come across is because of him. He can advise on all things because he created all things. He governs it all by his word. His creative power is the wellspring of life from eternity. He is our wise counselor. And we can trust him. You can trust him with your problems you could trust him to lead you in the right direction you could trust his word you could be sure he is listening when you pray to him about your worries and you can be certain he has your best interest at heart because he loves you most assuredly he does he did not want to be born in a manger because he thought that would be a fun ride he did it to save your very soul his love is so wide and so deep and so wonderful, you will never fully understand it. And it will take you all eternity to try. The other parts of that, that title, Mighty God. And when we think of Mighty God, we make the mistake of thinking physically. The title speaks not just of prowess, but his ultimate power over all. He has all might. He has all power, and we see it whenever it's first introduced earlier in the Old Testament when God appears to Abraham and says, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. God has many names and attributes. He is Almighty. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the builder of everything, the king of heaven, the God of all mankind, 
the eternal king. He is the one and only true God, the eternal God, the everlasting God, the maker of all things. He is able to do more things than we can ever ask for or imagine. He performs wonders that cannot be fathomed. He has miracles that cannot be counted. His power is completely unlimited. And this should strike awe and wonder in your very souls. And what is more amazing is that this God, this one and only true God, who's wholly different from all of us, it should strike that awe and wonder into our heart, now has a face. And we celebrate that today. That face is personal. That face is Jesus Christ. The Hebrew phrase translated everlasting father could be translated literally father of eternity. And for this reason, many people just use that as a defense that the Messiah has created, created all things from the beginning. And we know that he was the architect of the ages. We see this in the New Testament, but this thought, that's not what this phrase means. The construction of this phrase in Hebrew means father is the primary noun and everlasting is the term that best describes his fatherhood. He is father forever. The Hebrew word translated everlasting has the idea of in perpetuity, without end. Indeed, the next verse says of the Messiah, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. This is your everlasting father and it's gonna go on through eternity. He never stops being your father. The final title, Prince of Peace. Now, Father here always reminds us that the peace that's offered in Mass is not our definition of peace, but a peace that only Christ can offer, which is beyond all of our understanding. In a world filled with war and violence, it's hard for us to get our minds wrapped around how this God, this powerful God who could control all things, doesn't establish peace peace in human history. But physical safety and political harmony is not what this term means. That doesn't necessarily reflect the peace that Christ is talking about. We are not talking about the appearance of calm and tranquility in individuals. The term means so much more. It means more than unity and accord. The objective of what this word means is that the spiritual harmony brought about by God is an individual's restoration with God. Prior to this, you were enemies of God. But God demonstrates his own love towards you, and that while you were yet sinners, he sends his son to eventually die for you. And because of Christ's sacrifice, we are restored to, uh, restored to a relationship of peace. That is a deep, abiding peace between our hearts and the Creator that can never be taken away. And the ultimate fulfillment of Christ's work is that Prince of Peace. That's just four of his titles. He has many, many more. So as the season draws to a close, as you remember the lack of time, as you remember the sweets that you shoved in your grave, the gifts that you wrapped, the stress that you put upon yourself because you did not make it to the store in time as you remember the joys and the pitfalls as you have regret for not making it to the parties. As you think fondly of the time you did spend with family and friends and wished you had more time regretting the time that you lost. When you think about your pocketbooks, your upcoming bills that you've just created for yourself and all your problems just wishing that your only regret was lack of time. I want you to take time to focus on one thing, and one thing only. You have a God who is incomprehensible. He is all wise. He is all full of knowledge. He is a mighty God, and you are his child. And that God has restored you and extended you his peace. Then maybe you could say like the angels, glory to God in the highest. Amen. Thank you.
Let's pray for the whole state of Christ Church in the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to Francis our Pope, to Stephen our Bishop, and to all bishops and other sacred ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoice in thy whole creation. They may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee in thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants depart in this life with thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to be merciful and grant the fullness of joy in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our mediator and advocate, to whom we thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory. Draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, be acknowledged and be of our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most seriously have committed, by the law of the word of the meeting, and as by the divine majesty, provoking most justly by wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life.
Pray, brethren, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray thee, that the offerings which on this day's festival we present unto thee may be acceptable in thy sight, that by the bounteous goodness vouchsafed unto us in this holy exchange, we may be found in the likeness of him in whom our substance is united unto thee, who liveth and reigneth world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts.
we beseech thee then, our Lord, graciously to accept this oblation from us, thy servants, and from thy whole family. Order thou our days of thy peace, and bid us to be delivered from eternal damnation, to be numbered in the fold of thine elect. Vouchsafe, O God, we beseech thee in all things to make this oblation blessed, approved and accepted, a perfect and worthy offering, that it may become for us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Who the day before he suffered took bread into his holy and venerable hands with eyes lifted up to heaven unto thee, God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to thee, he blessed, broke, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. <clears throat> for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Through whom, O Lord, thou dost ever create all these good things, 
shall sanctify, quicken, bless, and be so them upon. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, to the O Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory throughout all ages, world without end.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sin of the world. Except for those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come unto my room, but speak the word, and my soul shall take thee Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come unto my room, but speak the word, and my soul shall take thee Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come unto my room, but speak the word, and my soul shall take thee
and ever living God, we are thank thee, and that thou hast seen us in the holy mysteries, through the spirit of the fruit of those precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and of the church of thy favorite goodness towards us, that we in our very members and corporate in the midst of the body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs of the hope of thy God. Proceed in peace. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with thy nice spirit. In the Holy Gospel according to St. John the Divine. The Lord is with thee, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the light was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh nor is the will of man, but of God. And the word is made flesh and dwells among us. When we beheld his glory, the glory is of the only begotten the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. 